Hello again and welcome to the first day of the Malvern Spring Flower Show or Festival as it's now been called and here is our display. So I'll walk you around it in a moment, just pan out for a moment because I want to also show the lovely backdrop of Grafton Nursery's eucalyptus stand. I love, love, love their sculptures and panels here, absolutely gorgeous. But I mustn't dwell, I must give you what you've looked for, which is our stand. And um, I got a gold for it, so I'm hoping that means that they realise this time that I've used a single picture chopped into three rather than the same picture three times, which was a criticism last time. So I'll walk you around. I've got an exhibitor that's going to start heckling me during my video. Anyway, I've got Dancing Queen here. I haven't been able to show that for quite some time, but uh, here she is in all her glory, looking absolutely stunning. Um, trying to tilt the camera so you can get an eyeful of that gold, but it's just coming up lime from what I can see, but it might look different when you're viewing it. And behind Dancing Queen, I've got Forbidden Fruit. And alongside Forbidden Fruit, I've got Humpback Whale. Now it's coming out that will be much bigger than Forbidden Fruit, but not so yet. It's decided it's going to put the brakes on at the moment. And in front, I've got a good old favourite, First Frost. I love that plant. And uh, again, to my eyes, it's looking very intense with an orange gold edge to it and blue centres. Then I've got a lovely plant called Harry Van Trier. You've probably spotted that on several displays in the past. It's actually comes out quite tightly filled then opens up a little bit more during the season but it does give a lovely mass of leaves it's a great one for edging and behind that I've got El Nino another old favorite <clears throat> and another old favorite Hyden Sunset again still looking absolutely beautiful it's one of the few that I've been able to reuse from Harrogate strangely enough it didn't stretch whilst it was on the stand the actual sales plants I had to completely replace the ones I didn't sell because they had stretched beyond belief some of them were heading up towards a foot tall now I've got silver lance edging this particular mound and if I pan down here you've got proud sentry and right at the back over the bridge is Moonstruck. And then what I've done is I've covered off different aspects of growing in the ground. So looking at environment and how that infect, uh, infects, affects the growth of plants, weather and company. Because hostas, of course, are used very widely as bedding plants with amongst bedding plants and herbaceous borders. And it's a nice way to grow them because it helps show off other planting, but the other planting quite often attracts the snails. So it's a mixed blessing to plant a mixed border using hostas. Liberty's looking absolutely gorgeous at the moment, so she had to come. Then I've got red salamander, which grows very rapidly, and it's a lovely little plant for highlighting others of a more colorful nature. Then I've got blue hearts. And Kisuji, looking fluffy and lovely. Ice lemon. And Terpsichore on the end, looking lush and lovely. So, I come up again now. I think the Acer picture does the trick. I was concerned about how that would look. I think it does the trick without actually having to use a tree. I always used to be penalised for using aces in my display. And I'll come back and this is the containered side. So some of the familiar posters I've used over the last, I suppose, eight shows or so. At the back, in the pond, I have Percy. Uh, he's standing on a stand in the pond, he's not actually got his feet in the pond. And then I've got Curls, which is a lovely variety. And then I've got Bedford Rise and Shine with its beautiful red stems, there we have it. 
then we have Angelata. And in front of Angelata, you might have heard somebody mention behind me, I've got yellow polka dot bikini, which at this time of the year is showing its most vibrant color. During the season, the margins of the plant will turn slightly greener. In fact, in a sort of streaky way, so it almost starts to look a bit like its parent, Striptease. I have then Warwick Comet as a description of a plant that improves its color as the season goes on. It comes out looking sort of, you can see the variegation quite well down here, but it just gets brighter and more vibrant during the season and that cupped textured leaf is, well, it's fab. And then I've got Totally Twisted, rapidly becoming a favorite of mine with its beautiful pink stems, which we'll just about pick out. It's very gloomy in here. The weather is absolutely atrocious, but perfect weather for, as far as I'm concerned, because I rang home last night and the nurseries had a lovely set of deluges to start making up for some of the lack of rainfall we've had. So in my little pots, I have Little Wonder and Lemon Lime, and I've got Rock Island Lime. I'll just pan in a bit. There we go, Rock Island Lime. And TikTok. I've got little Maddie looking gorgeous. For such an interesting little plant that grows so well, it clumps up beautifully. Not quite as much as Sugaro Kamachi. That's getting to the limit of being in its pot. I did think I might have to swap that out after Harrogate because it just gets too big. But um, because the weather's been so cold, it just stopped where it was and didn't do anything else so she came to little white lines there we go and red cadet which has quite a big leaf for a mini plant but it's got the lovely red stems so it's quite an interesting one to plant as a contrast with other more um, other minis that have got smaller leaves and in my oval baskets at the bottom or I've done it again, I call them baskets, they are pots. I've got Thumbelina and Gold Rush. I had to swap Gold Rush out because it got so leggy, it's ridiculous. Then Alan P. McConnell, I do adore that plant, it's absolutely gorgeous. And the zinginess of Yellow Boa. Suzuki Thumbnail. Slim and Trim. Yes, again, in a stand. I don't think I can build a stand without slim and trim these days. Hush Puppy. And behind Hush Puppy, I've got Gumdrop. I don't think I mentioned little Sherborne Swift in the pond as well. So there we go, Sherborne Swift. And I'll come out again. It's worth just hovering in on Totally Twisted again, because it's starting, as it's getting more mature, starting to do its twisting fascinating plant that. As it twists it starts to show the white undersides. Absolutely lovely. And there we have the stand. I'll just sort of pan up towards the eucalyptus stand again, Grafton Nursery. I do love the eucalyptus. It's absolutely beautiful. And panning around we have hides bulbs, all the tulips and the daffs and what have you. And we've got Prizewood Clematis at the back celebrating 40 years this year. And scanning down to the, I can't remember, I think it's the south entrance of the marquee. And those stands over there, that's Avon bulbs, reusing their beautiful display from last year where they were master grower here. And back again to the natural side of the stand. And there you have it, firm oven for this year. Bye for now.